This podcast is made possible in part by Patreon. If you'd like to join the effort to ensure that I don't go broke from producing this content, then head on over to japanke.com slash Patreon and sign up for as little as $1 a month. Link in the show notes. Uh, the latest person to join this uh, incredible fight to keep me going on my silly little ventures here <laughs> is Philip Bardsley. So Philip joined the $3 a month plus alpha tier that comes with access to Japanese plus alpha, a whole other podcast that I produce about the Japanese language and fun, interesting little things that I find out about the language and look into. So if you're interested in that, go check out japanki.com slash Patreon. But I do want to say here that Philip didn't just join for $3 a month. No, 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 no. He joined for $5 a month, and that just blew my mind. So thank you so, 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 so much to Philip. And uh, again, japanki.com slash Patreon if you want to help out. Welcome to Japan Station, a production of japanki.com. I'm your host, Tony Vega. Got a couple quick announcements for you, and then we'll get into the main part of the episode. So, uh, first of all, I have a personal Twitter account. I don't publicize it because I don't really, I don't know, bother. <laughs> but um, if you already follow me on, on Facebook on, and Twitter at Japankyo News, then hey, great. Thank you for that. I do tweet about other stuff over on my personal account at the Vega Tony, at the Vega Tony. Um, just anime that I'm watching, random thoughts that I have, or the other projects that I work on, um, like Transmissions from Hawaii. That's a podcast about Hawaii that I also work on, Transmissions from Hawaii. Go check that out if you haven't yet, and it sounds interesting to you. Uh, also, I'm working on another project that's not um, under the Japankyo umbrella, but it is related to Japan. Um, and it's a very interesting creative thing that I've never done before. Uh, and I'm very excited to uh, announce it, but uh, that's not going to be out until August. So I'm not going to talk about it in concrete terms here, but I will be announcing it soon on this show as well as on social media and over at japanko.com in the coming week. So keep an eye out for that. And lastly, don't forget to check out the other podcast about Japan that I produce. It's called Ichimon Japan, I-C-H-I-M-O-N. All right, so let's get into the main part of the episode, which is my conversation with Mike Penny. So Mike Penny is a shamisen performer and composer uh, based in Los Angeles. He's performed around the U.S. and Japan. Uh, his work has appeared in Ghosts of Tsushima, the very, very popular PS4 game. Um, he's an educator. He also posts a lot of really fun and interesting uh, content over on his YouTube channel. Just look up Mike Penny uh, and you can also find him on Bandcamp. So um, the shamisen, by the way, if you're not aware, it's a three-stringed Japanese lute. We are going to talk about it much more in the conversation today, but Suffice it to say that if you've ever heard traditional Japanese music, you've almost certainly heard uh, a shamisen. It's super recognizable. It's got this kind of like buzz twang sort of to it. And, and like I said, really, really uh, easily uh, recognized once you know what to look out for. But anyway, uh, Mike also has this really, really fun and interesting uh, project called MPO. Um, and that stands for Mike Penny Orchestra. And what he does as part of MPO is basically like, really creative sometimes you might even say experimental stuff with the uh, shamisen and one thing that he really really enjoys doing is combining this kind of like 80s pop music with the shamisen and that results in this really unique fun sort of music that i've had never heard before but now i absolutely love so you're gonna get to hear a couple of quick uh clips uh today in the rest of the episode which actually brings me to well the intro for today's episode so normally you would uh hear the standard intro that i always use some train noises and that song which is called oiro controller by you know me um but today i'm not gonna throw to that today i'm going to introduce a clip of one of mike's songs so the song is called leaving forever and it's one of these songs that he does under mpo which combines this sort of like 80s vibe with the shamisen uh it's just a short clip and then we're gonna fade right into the conversation like we always do so anyway here is leaving forever by mpo followed by my conversation with mike penny
I, I do have to tell you that uh, I have Leaving Forever stuck in my head now. So, um, oh. <laughs> it's such a catchy song. <laughs> oh, thank you. I'm glad. I, I'm glad slash sorry. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, I love it. I love it. Um, I, I do want to get into all that stuff, but first, um, I want to ask you about uh, Ghosts of Tsushima. I noticed that you 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 played um, some stuff that that got used in in the game. So, um, for anybody that's not aware, that was a really really popular um, PlayStation game, right? In tw- that came out in twenty twenty. Um, yeah. How did that come about? What what was what did you do on that? Um, how was that experience like? Um, as far as I know, uh, the two composers, main composers of the video game score. Apparently, uh, did some Googling for local shamisen players because they mm-hmm. knew they wanted that element in mm-hmm. the score. Mm-hmm. And uh, I think Bill said that he came across my Bandcamp page mm-hmm. and he saw that I had arranged a Chopin piece for shamisen oh. and that tickled him for uh-huh. some reason. And uh, he decided to give me a call and, and it just worked out. I, I am not a big gamer myself. I, mm-hmm. I, appreciate them and and uh, would like to get more into them but uh i still haven't played the game so i don't <laughs> but i hear good things no yeah i haven't played it either but i i've heard nothing but good things about it it's been a really really like positive reception it seems so yeah uh, that's that's great to have your your name in, in that project and such a it seems like a really important kind of uh monumental project for especially for the past couple of years so that's awesome um, I was listening to the soundtrack, and I, I assume I, I heard some of your playing. I, I mean, there's no way to know, but I assume it was you. So yeah, yeah, yeah uh, could be. Um, yeah. I know there was. I, I think they used another shamisen player um, mm-hmm. when they did some recording in Japan. They yeah. worked with uh, an orchestra over there and some other mm-hmm. instrumentalists, mm-hmm. I think. But, but yeah, yeah, there's a good chance. I'm 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 told I'm all over it, but I don't know exactly when, where, but. Um, but yeah, it was it was a really fun project, and I was really lucky to be able to work on it. I really liked the music, so mm-hmm. the music right yeah, yeah. away when I very when I got like it. mix of like cinematic with the traditional Japanese and a nice mm-hmm. blend it seems of of both elements. Definitely, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, no, that's awesome. So, all right then. So, I, I was reading that it seems that you weren't particularly like into Japan or anything like that before you got into shamisen. Um, could you tell me like how, how that happened? How did you become interested and in, in how all that went? Sure. Um, yeah, yeah I, I guess a, a way to kind of sum it up was I was a musician first and, and I mm-hmm. found the shamisen later and now it's, you know, my primary instrument, but, um, no, I just kind of followed my musical nose, mm-hmm. <laughs> so to speak. <laughs> and that's how I, found the shamisen and through the shamisen i learned about japanese culture studied the mm-hmm. language um it all kind of snowballed from from there shamisen was the gateway to uh, yeah. learning more about japanese culture and i'm i'm very glad i i uh found the shamisen and took that subsequent journey but yeah originally i i didn't have any particular affinity for it mm-hmm. any particular interest in japanese culture um i just it was just I I didn't know much about it, and um, like I said, Shamisen gave me a reason to investigate more and get mm. and, and learn more. And so, so w- yeah. what did you play before you got into the Shamisen? Uh, a first instrument, guitar, mm-hmm. and I played in high, you know, junior high jazz band, and I played trombone and percussion in the drum corps, and uh, kind of a little bit of everything: bass, guitar, drums. Uh, you know, my friends were mostly musicians as well, so mm-hmm. you know we'd all kind of trade off, mm. um, play different instruments, but primarily guitar. And mm. then um, around the time I was graduating from high school, I, I was seventeen or eighteen, and I decided that I wanted to branch out a little musically. And um, I was listening to. I've just always been a fan of all kinds of music. There isn't one kind of music that I can say categorically I don't like. Um, Mm -hmm. I'm just, I love music as, as a language. Um, and, uh, so I was, I was listening to a lot of different, um, cultures and music Mm -hmm. around that time. I was really into Indian classical music. Um, Mm -hmm. I was, uh, 
dabbling with Tabla. I listened to mm. Zakir Hussein and Ustad al Araka with um, Ravi Shankar and mm-hmm. just mm-hmm. all kinds of music I was getting into. So I wanted to branch out and learn another instrument. I knew that much, but I didn't mm-hmm. know which instrument. And um, I attended a world music camp that's held annually. I don't know if they hold it anymore, but mm-hmm. they used to hold it annually in Northern California in the Redwoods. You'd go, you'd camp in the forest. Mm-hmm. You'd be around, you know, musicians from all over the world, many of whom were pretty accomplished, like pretty established in their, whatever their niche mm, of cool. music was. And there I met a guy who was playing shamisen. Mm-hmm. I said, what the heck is that thing? <laughs> and mm-hmm. it's got yellow strings, these huge tuning pegs. He's playing it with some sort of jagged, you know, high <laughs> scraper looking uh, implement. And I yeah. just, and I was off, you know, it was, it's history from there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, um, okay. So then, adjusting from you know guitar and the other instruments that, that you had played, like what was it? Was there anything tricky about the shamisen? Was there anything new or different about it, or was the transition pretty like easy? Um, no, not easy. I mean, mm-hmm. I, I like to. I always like to consider how I should answer that kind mm-hmm. of question, only because I want people to know that if they're thinking about getting into shamisen. It's a very approachable instrument, actually. Mm-hmm. There's a there's a lot you can get out of it um, with a pre, with a kind of min, minimal effort put in. Mm-hmm. So so you can get a lot out of it early on, and uh, it's it's great for beginners. It's it's really approachable, like I said. But um, yeah, I wanted to. I was a little impatient, perhaps. So mm. um, you know, I just I just wanted to uh, basically Trend. I wanted to be able to. <laughs> You know what I'm saying, right? Yeah, I know what you mean. Yeah, yeah. You want to be doing the, the stuff that I see you doing on the videos. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. I yeah. I wanted to basically transfer everything I could do on guitar yeah. uh-huh. over to Shamisen right away. And of course that's unrealistic and uh uh-huh. you know, the hubris of youth or whatever. But um <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah, I just uh but so I, I just kinda made it my you know, my 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 obsession became my obsession mm-hmm. and I just, I just focused in on that. I moved up to Santa Cruz where the guy playing at that camp lived. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. I moved there specifically to, um, to study with him and it became more or less an apprenticeship. I, I saw him every mm-hmm. day. We'd, we'd practice for hours. He eventually started tapping me to go with him, um, to gigs. He got asked to perform and, and uh, then he brought me to Japan eventually in 2006. Mm-hmm. And it, again, it just kind of snowballed from there. I started playing with him out a lot. And then I joined some bands he was in. I became kind of an auxiliary member. Like I'd, I'd be kind of an understudy for him. Mm-hmm. You know, if he if he couldn't make a show, he, he'd say, Michael, do it. Mm. And uh, yeah, that was my that was my way in. And mm. uh yeah. <laughs> so what's the, is it, I'm just wondering, is there something different about the shamisen that was particularly tricky due to you being um, already used to guitar and the Western instruments? Or was it just simply the fact that it was a new instrument and you always go through that period when you pick up a new instrument? Oh, great, great way to phrase that. I think it's mm-hmm. both. I think, mm-hmm. you, you know, you have that that frustration, mm-hmm. um, like we, like we were saying a, a little bit, of uh, arrogance of youth and impatience. Mm-hmm. I just, I wanted to be able to transfer everything I could, I wanted to express musically. I wanted to be able to do on Shamisen right away, but mm-hmm. there is that, yeah, there's that learning period. There's that, um, and with Shamisen, there's certainly some aspects of guitar that are transferable. Mm-hmm. Um, maybe not even guitar specifically more just music in general i had an ear i had developed my ear enough that um shamisen unlike guitar is fretless so Mm -hmm. you have to have kind of that um that ability to determine if you're playing in tune or not you know find the correct pitches so Mm -hmm. that helped and then um you know some left hand techniques and stuff i found i could i could bring over pretty quickly onto shamisen the right mm. hand was probably the more tricky uh, aspect mm. that took took longer to um, build some 
some skill with. The bocce, it's called, the plectrum used to strike the strings. Yeah. There, that's, um, that's not something a lot of us Westerners uh, take to immediately. Um, it's, mm. a pretty, it's a pretty foreign uh, idea that you're taking this heavy, large plectrum and trying to hit very thin strings with accuracy and with mm-hmm. you know dynamics, soft, loud. So that part of it took me a lot of practice, uh, um, mm. probably more than the left hand. Mm-hmm. So, um, you know, I, I've, I've seen shamisens, but I don't, I don't think I've ever, I've definitely never held a bocce. Could you kind of describe it for us? How, how is it different from uh, your standard guitar pick that I think most people would be familiar with? Sure. Well, um, to the chagrin of any other shamisen players listening, mm-hmm. uh, because we get this all the time, yeah. it, it, it really is a useful comparison to say it, it looks a lot like an ice scraper. Mm. Or or a putty knife, a paint scraper, or something. Oh it's, yeah, 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 yeah. You know that's that's pretty helpful <laughs> if you want to kind of get a rough idea of what it looks like. Right. Um, it's 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 large. It, it weighs. You know, bocce vary depending on quality and materials used to make them, but they can weigh a pound to a couple pounds, three pounds. You know. Wow. Um, lighter than a pound. There's mm-hmm. there's a lot of variety, lots of different sizes and lots of different um like I said materials used to make them, but mm-hmm. it's a kind of heavy thing to wield to play mm-hmm. music, you know? Yeah. Uh especially if you're with the specific style of shamisen I play, um apart from MPO, the, the when I do traditional folk music, it tends to be Tsugaru folk music, Tsugaru mm-hmm. shamisen, which is what um if anyone is sort of familiar with the Yoshida brothers or, or sure, artists like yeah. that. They mm-hmm. played Sugaru Shamisen. It's a very frenetic, mm-hmm. up tempo, energetic style of music. So you're really you're really working when you play and mm-hmm. trying to play with that speed and intensity while wielding this heavy, kind yeah. of awkward, you know, thing is it takes a little getting used to. So, um, you know, my, my minimal knowledge of guitar and, and a little bit of ukulele, like just like I, I would assume that in order to get those kind of fast, um, you know, plucking, I, I guess you would say, is it that you're hitting the strings on the up and down both? Is, is that kind of the, the thing that results in those kind of frenetic solos and, and stuff that I hear? Yeah, yeah. There's a, there's a lot of um, downstrokes, upstrokes. Mm-hmm. You're, you're, you are doing that alternate kind of up, down, up, down thing with the right hand and then on the left hand you're doing a lot of kind of pizzicato moves as well a lot of Mm hammer-ons pull-offs in the guitar lexicon Mm -hmm. um so you know i i i hear a lot from people who are hearing shamisen for the first time they say wow Mm -hmm. that's a lot of sound and and music for just three strings it Mm -hmm. creates a you know you're you're kind of um yeah, the left hand's at work, the right hand's at work to create kind of a bigger sound than you would think is possible on a mm-hmm. on an instrument with only three strings. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And then what about the fretless aspect? Is that purely just like muscle memory? Like how, how do you become, you know, how do you figure out what note you're, you're hitting? Yeah, it, it's probably different from person to person, but mm-hmm. um, just like violin or cello or some of these mm-hmm. other western fretless instruments it's just practice it's it's Mm -hmm. it's doing your scales it's doing your arpeggios it's it's Mm -hmm. uh you just kind of do like you said you you build up muscle memory Mm -hmm. and you know muscle muscle memory i always tell uh students muscle memory kind of gets a bad rap among musicians Mm -hmm. i think some musicians feel guilty or feel like they're cheating if they rely Mm -hmm. on it i say Use what you got. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. It I mean, helps. It, it's, yeah, it's, it's, everybody learns differently, but I mean, the way that I would, I would look at it for, through the lens of language, right? Like some people like to learn the grammar and the structure and then they build on top of that and, you know, that works for them. And I, I assume it's something similar for some people in music as well. So, yeah. Yeah. There's um, no one way. <laughs> yeah, exactly, exactly. Yeah. Uh, all right. So then what, um, where, where do you perform? Like, where do you, what kinds of places, um, have, uh, an outlet for you to perform shamisen? How, do, how does that go? Um, I'm lucky here in LA, mm-hmm. there are lots of opportunities to perform. Um, 
there are lots of Japanese cultural organizations mm-hmm. and events that they throw uh, that I've, you know, been lucky enough to be asked to perform at. Mm-hmm. Those a lot, most of those performances tend to be they tend to ask me to play more traditional uh, mm-hmm. repertoire. Mm-hmm. So, so yeah. those are my kind of straightforward Sugaru Shamisen. This is a traditional set where I will play traditional pieces of music uh, without much um, of my kind of individuality well Mm -hmm. without my mpo-ness sure let's say you know for mpo we we actually played one show uh uh, one live show we've ever performed and um that was that was at a venue that was at a kind of rock venue um so there's it depends on what project we're talking about when i'm just performing as a solo shamisen performer they tend to be like i said traditional but uh, yeah, lots of um, festivals, multicultural festivals, or uh-huh. or uh, you know concerts with taiko groups. I get asked to perform with a lot the Japanese drum ensembles. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, how? Uh, let me. <laughs> okay, let's get to MPO then. <laughs> so okay, <laughs> what? Um, could you explain um, what MPO is? What kind of music you play at, with MPO um, for for anybody that hasn't listen to the awesome songs of MPO. <laughs> oh, you're kind. Um, let's see. I don't know. How do I describe that? Um, There's certainly a mix, but um, I mean, the vibe that I get is, you know, it's kind of yeah. like the, the, you know, 80s synth mixed with, you know, the, the traditional kind of shamisen sound meshed together into this just wonderful, unique thing. <laughs> <laughs> wow. That's great. Thank you. Well, that's I, I what get it is, like, then. <laughs> I get <laughs> vibes of like a little Michael McDonald, um, you know, like Leaving Forever, that kind of like, you know, the style sure. of singing that you were doing there. <laughs> so. Oh, yes, yes. It's hard to, that was that was over 10 years ago or maybe around 10 years yeah, ago. Yeah, it now. seems around 10 years ago. That was 2011, I think. Wow. Yeah. Wow, time flies. Well, so, yeah, where, where I, did, yeah. How did that come about then? When when did you have the idea? You know what? Let me, let me do this. <laughs> <laughs> well... Um, right. You know, Mike, Mike Penny Orchestra, MPO Mm -hmm. for short, that is my kind of, I view that as my, it's probably the, the most meaningful project Mm -hmm. I have. Um, just personally, it's my kind of workshop. It's where I get to, I view it as an opportunity to kind of put to use any any skill sets I have with music, um, mm-hmm. kind of combine them and 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 do whatever I I want musically. Mm-hmm. So it's it's a really it's it's great because I I get that release that outlet through MPO that uh, yeah. I don't get when I'm you know performing more traditional pieces live, mm-hmm. for instance. Um, yeah, MPO. Um, well, like I said, I you know I was a musician first before mm-hmm. I was a shamisen player. I I just was a fan of and student of music. So, um, and and so many influences, uh, you know, is that there's there are so many seemingly disparate styles of music that I I really really love on a deep level and want mm-hmm. to kind of dabble in and sure. And so I love writing period pieces. I love trying to. Uh, compose in, in different styles and be authentic to those styles. Mm, um, mm-hmm. You know, so Leaving Forever was kind of a, kind of my first foray into into that, trying mm-hmm. to do something, trying to capture some sounds, um, you know, that I really, uh, that I'm really attached to from sure. childhood or, you know, things I heard growing up. Mm-hmm. So I was like, if I could combine sort of everything I'm interested in musically, which, you know, can it's 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 styles like 80s new wave, it's mm-hmm. it's compositional um, aspects of composition I really like, like harmony and mm-hmm. you know some some classical forms of of harmony counterpoint things like that, mm-hmm. and then shamisen of course. So. I'm kind of taking a lot of elements from my musical life and putting them together in Leaving Forever. And that's what you hear. Uh, humor, of course, you know, yeah, um, yeah. such as it is, is is also very important to me and something I like. Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, it's a useful thing for me to express myself through. So so Leaving Forever was just kind of 
let's put it all together and see if we can make something halfway decent. And yeah, yeah. I'm very, I'm, I'm happy whenever people bring it up to me and say they <laughs> like it. Yeah. Not that that happens all the time, you, but <laughs> you, for instance, that, that makes me happy. That you, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I love it. I love it. And, and the, the Shamisen solo, like, it's just because you put two or three things together and you create something different, it doesn't mean that it's good. But, right. But you came up with, at least I know, everything is subjective and some people may not like it, but whatever. You know, it's something that really hit me and perhaps it's partially because I do have a soft spot for 80s music and I love traditional mm-hmm. Japanese music as well. And this is like the perfect kind of amalgam of these two things. But yeah, I, I really enjoyed it. So, <laughs> Thanks. Yeah, well, you yeah. know, I was thinking about, yeah, what, what, why, when you asked me about MPO, it's like, yeah. it's it's the reason it's kind of hard for me to, to sum it up is because, mm-hmm. you know, it's essentially me. It's, it's mm-hmm. the place mm-hmm. I get to be me. Yeah. So that's why it's so important to me because some MPO songs are very heavy on the synth pop kind of thing, right, that right, sound. Right. And mm-hmm. then others are, are, you know, I've written like a classical rondo. I've yeah, written, yeah. Uh, you know, like a manouche gypsy jazz swing type thing. Yeah, um, and I, I was listening to some of the other ones too. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, it's it's kind of that's that's if I had my kind of pet uh my pet passion, my pet philosophy yeah. <laughs> is kind of like what it boils down to is that I'm I'm just endlessly thrilled by any music or or art mm-hmm. uh, or people for that matter that have more to them or more to it than what's mm-hmm. What can be immediately perceived, you know? Sure, 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 sure. I like I like things, you know, like you were saying, obviously it's subjective. There's mm-hmm. everyone has their own beauty aesthetic and taste mm-hmm. and level of experience or exposure with certain things. But mm-hmm. um you know, there's so many facets to music. There's aesthetic, vibe, mm-hmm. you know? And that can yeah. be achieved through the synths. The synths give you that 80s vibe and aesthetic. Mm-hmm, um, mm-hmm. Production style helps there too, partly mm-hmm. through. But then there's instrumentation. So shamisen comes into play and it gives it a little different flavor and mm-hmm. that X factor. Mm-hmm. And then there's composition. Yeah. And that that's like the words on the page. If you want to yeah, use yeah, a, yeah. an acting analogy, it's like the script and then you have the actor and then you have the movie, you know, mm-hmm. it's, it's a lot of things that I can, I like to consider, um, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. not just with my own music, but when I listen to other styles of music, but like I was saying, it's one of the endlessly thrilling things about it is, to me is when you, you hear some sort of cheap, crappy sounding Casio keyboard, mm-hmm. but then you listen to the, but then you consider what it's actually playing the melody right. itself you separate it from the instrument it mm-hmm. how it's presented and you boil it down to its essentials and that's that's what i think is so interesting you can have a really sophisticated melody mm-hmm. but mm-hmm. since it's coming through a, a crappy casio keyboard people might write it off when right. when maybe they shouldn't if and that's kind of the thing i always like to share with people is um Sometimes we have to sense what uh, what's underneath the surface to fully understand or appreciate something, you know. Definitely, yeah. So, yeah. Um, well, you, you mentioned the the humor side of things, and one of oh, your, yeah. I think you, well, there's there's a lot of, I, <laughs> I love I love just the random stuff that you you were posting on, on your YouTube channel, just kind of almost like Tim and Eric ish kind of things. <laughs> I don't know if you've ever watched that, but oh sure, um, oh uh, yeah, very, you know, random kind of you know unexpected. Like, wait, what what was this? I don't know, but I had a fun good time watching it. Um, there's this one song that I think you released last year called Perfect Alley Rare. Oh yeah, um, yeah. Uh-huh. <laughs> which is about you tried to find a, a good-looking alley. <laughs> Could you explain that? <laughs> oh man! You know, this is the first time I've ever been asked these questions in any interview. <laughs> Usually it's all about shamisen and Japanese culture. So, Well, you know, I, I mean, we talked a little bit about that, but I, sure. I got I to talk about the stuff that clearly it seems like you, you're, well, you just said you, <laughs> this is your passion. And I, I love talking to people about the stuff that they're passionate about. So, yeah, please tell me about Perfect Alley Rare. <laughs> 
Perfect Alley Rare specifically, I don't know if I have any. Uh, I don't know if I have any good stories about its origin, other than the music generally comes first with MPO songs. Mm-hmm. I I build the entire piece, and when it's when the music's done, I know mm-hmm. what the melody for the vocals. You know, I've de- I've decided the melody. Mm-hmm. I now I have to lay words on top. That's generally how it works. Actually, Leaving Forever was an exception. That the lyrics and the music happened at the same time. But mm-hmm. usually, music first, lyric second. So sometimes I struggle with with what to sing about because, um, well, I don't I don't want to say anything. Uh, I don't want to speak beyond my station about certain things sometimes. Mm -hmm. And also I want it to not take away from the, whatever the essence of the music itself is, you know? So Mm -hmm. if you, if you have a really upbeat, happy, kind of quirky song musically, Mm -hmm. I'd Mm -hmm. like the lyrics to enhance that quirkiness or that Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. upbeatness. So, um, so deciding on lyrics takes a while sometimes and that one mm-hmm. i think i think it had to do with a bruce springsteen kick i was i was on yeah and i just thought whenever i think of, whenever i think of bruce springsteen for some reason the first the image that always pops into my mind is him leaning on a on a brick wall in some alley with <laughs> steam coming out of a drain pipe or something <laughs> you know that yeah, you yeah. know exactly what i'm talking about I know, yeah, I know, yeah. Uh, what was funny was later when I was making the video for it, mm-hmm. I, I I couldn't find a single photo like that of Bruce Springsteen. So it, <laughs> I don't know where that image came from, but uh-huh. that's the image I had of him in my mind. So uh, I just thought, what what a funny, ridiculous concept for a for a song uh-huh. that I'm, and I, I kind of made it a little meta. Like it had been a while since MPO had released any videos, so. Yeah. This was kind of a, I'm um, I'm back, you know, I'm 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 back out there. I'm making a new video. So sure. from there, it's like, well, I could sing about scouting a location, and uh, mm-hmm. and that was what was on my mind was Bruce Springsteen. So why not involve him? I always like taking these these kind of random things that are happening in my life, or or uh-huh. or things from my past that I just happen to be focusing on when I'm making the song. I like putting those yeah. in there as ingredients because it kind of <laughs> adds to the whole for for one it makes it kind of um accidentally relatable sometimes you know because uh-huh, uh-huh. i'm already kind of asking a lot of my audience here's shamisen <laughs> here's 80s pop here's <laughs> some ridiculous premise for a song yeah. you know it's like you got to give them something so <laughs> i so you guys know and love bruce springsteen here you go that was my my token to the to anybody s- Foolish enough to watch. Yeah, no, I, I love it. I mean, anybody that makes a song about trying to find a, a good looking alley, I mean, come on. You, you, that's good. That's good. <laughs> Thanks. Um, I, I wonder, have you, have you heard any reactions from Japanese people after they've heard like MPO style stuff, some of the more unique stuff, not the Tsugaru, like traditional stuff? Yeah, yeah. I like to, um, so I work for a, Japanese cultural nonprofit mm-hmm. and um but even before then I mm-hmm. here in LA just from performing and everything mm-hmm. you know I have a lot of friends Japanese friends who are familiar with shamisen music the mm-hmm. way it's traditionally played and presented mm-hmm. and I, I I always like to check in with them and see what they think um mm-hmm. and bounce ideas off of them and so yeah I mean I I've, I've never heard any uh, negative remarks. I, I, I think if if there were any criticisms, I wouldn't necessarily hear about it. But um, yeah, yeah. no, I've I've been very uh, happy that the, the the reactions have generally been very positive. And yeah. um, actually, my my uh, my good friend who who is a shamisen maker in Tokyo, shamisen Kato, he goes by. Uh-huh. Um, she's a great guy all around. Just a just a very generous funny guy who, who uh-huh. makes the best shamisen and sells them. And, um, well, he, he repairs them and sells them. But uh-huh. anyway, he, um, he 
he heard some of my stuff early on. He heard Le- Leaving Forever, for instance, and mm-hmm. he, he called me to tell me how much he liked it. And he said, mm. and I remember he said something like, he said like, uh, you know, I hear where this is going. Yeah. And I think he was basically saying like, I hear the beginnings of something that down mm-hmm. the road is, is going to be really, I don't know, fill in the blank. I don't know if he meant something good, something bad, mm-hmm. but he, he heard the, um, the potential of what sure, I was doing. Sure, sure. Mm-hmm. And that was really, that was really encouraging that, mm-hmm. you know, here's a guy who's kind of, um, a, uh, he's, he's a prominent figure in the shamisen community, mm-hmm. um, telling me that this strange quirky thing I'm doing with shamisen is not only, um, okay he mm-hmm. he accepts it <laughs> but yeah. that he actually likes it and can hear um potential in it that that really encouraged me i i remember that very oh that's great yeah that's great i mean and, and i mean anybody even if you've never heard a shamisen when when they hear you play you, you know mpo or or not mpo i mean they can tell oh this is a skilled musician right <laughs> like i mean th- that that really i think helps crack open the door and and kind of stop and consider something that because on, on paper again i mean i'm just saying it again but 80s plus shamisen you don't think it would go <laughs> together but you know on paper it seems like how are you going to put this together but when you hear somebody right. pull it off well and you go like oh okay i i see how this works now <laughs> like <laughs> oh that's cool i'm glad it works <laughs> uh, yeah no well anyway I, I i love it so i i i will include links in the show notes for anybody that that you know i encourage them to check it out <laughs> um so what about um, like the shamisen community in, in the West Coast, California? Like, are there a lot of places for people to go to learn? Like, what, what is that like? If somebody wants to go pick up a shamisen and check it out, how, how would they go about doing that? Oh, yeah. Well, mm-hmm. there are a couple of options um, here in L.A. Mm-hmm. I, I teach, but then there's also group classes. Um, mm. uh, Mitsuru Sasaki Sensei in mm-hmm. Torrance teaches and she teaches mm. group classes and mm-hmm. i encourage anybody who be- w- think they might be- uh, thinks they might benefit from um, learning in a group setting to check her out uh, mm-hmm. sasaki kai i believe it's called um okay. but for people not here in la mm-hmm. um kyle abbott a good friend of mine and someone with whom i regularly perform and mm-hmm. collaborate with he started he is the founder and um the guy in charge of uh bachido mm-hmm. bachido that's b is in ball a c h i d o dot com it's mm-hmm. an online shamisen community and it's the first english speaking shamisen community wow. and on it there's a store where you can buy a beginner shamisen kit or a pro model. Um, he sells all the supplies you'll need, and there's a lot of um, instructional materials there for free mm-hmm. as well. Mm-hmm. So, and mo- most importantly, it's a there's a forum, uh, you know, and there's a community mm-hmm. of like-minded folks who are very encouraging and have lots of resources they can share with anyone interested. So, I encourage anyone who's interested in starting to, starting shamisen to uh, mm-hmm. go to Bachido and you know, just again, the community is very kind, very open, and very mm. eager to help anyone interested in getting started. Mm, that's great. Like in one of your videos, I, I saw that you shipped Kyle your your shamisen to yeah. get it tuned up and repaired. Um, so I guess he he does like all that kind of crafts side of things, like fixing shamisen, making shamisen. I guess. Yeah, yeah. He's oh. he's he's really skilled luthier Mm -hmm. and and um his whole family is musical and they have a workshop uh at their home and Mm -hmm. yeah he's been he's been making instruments and repairing instruments since he was a wee thing so yeah yeah he he reskinned the shamisen Mm -hmm. and uh and made some made some repairs and sounding Mm -hmm. great now (laughs) how long have you had that one this one i have had Gosh, now it must be like six years or so. Mm. Yeah. Before that, I had another one um, mm-hmm. that I bought from that shamisen maker I was talking about, shamisen right. kato. Mm-hmm. Had that for a few years. Now a student of mine plays that one. Mm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And like, is that, did you have it tuned up before the six years or was this the first time? 
This was the first time I had mm-hmm. ever sent it off for repairs. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Which is an interesting thing because, um, especially with the natural skins, this one is a synthetic skin I have now, which okay. I, I wanted. Um, mm-hmm. But when I got it, it had a natural skin on it. And mm-hmm. usually those tear naturally Ooh. after mm-hmm. about, I mean, it depends on the humidity and the climate of wherever you're living. But sure. Generally speaking, people will replace it every year or two. That mm-hmm. might even be, I think some pros replace it, you know, some big name artists with uh, who are bankrolled probably mm-hmm. get it repaired more often than that. Sure. But uh, this, yeah. Here, I think it has a lot to do with the arid climate here mm-hmm. in Los Angeles. I could be right, wrong, right. but mm-hmm. um, for whatever reason, the, the natural skin lasted. And it actually, after a while deadened so much in its tone Mm -hmm. that it created this kind of unique shamisen sound so kyle Mm -hmm. and in the video he made about repairing he kind of Mm -hmm. documents repairing my shamisen Mm -hmm. he talks about how you know he's glad to work on it he's happy he's working on it and improving it but uh he's he kind of laments the fact that the tone is going to go away because it kind of became my signature shamisen tone Mm -hmm. for a while it was nobody really ever plays on shamisen skins that that dead so it hmm. sounded like um you know i'd liken it to if you if you play a drum kit and the tom heads are mm-hmm. really dull they mm-hmm. kind of thud and mm-hmm. uh they don't have a clear note you yeah. hear when it was kind of like that so oh. it, it was uh it was unique for shamisen interesting yeah. so for a beginner would you recommend then like synthetic is i guess it's also cheaper huh yeah, yeah, okay. synthetic's the way to go. I mean, there's okay. really no reason, and you you might even have a hard time kind of tracking down. Gotcha. The, it's a it's a um, what do you call it? Diminishing resource. <laughs> yeah, re- yeah, 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 and and probably like ridiculously expensive for a lot of yeah. them. <laughs> yeah, yeah, synthetic's the way to go. So yeah, there's lots of beginner. Um, mm-hmm. There's even alternatives to buying. Because even some beginner shamisen can be a little costly, a mm-hmm. few hundred. If you're not sure you want to commit to actually, you know, long-term playing shamisen, mm-hmm. there, there are, um, they call them uh, shamisen, shami buddies that Kyle makes. And they're kind mm-hmm. of homemade, uh, bare-bones versions of shamisen that are more affordable. And you can get that and kind of decide if you want to continue learning. Mm-hmm. Now okay. upgrade eventually. Awesome. All right. Um, I'll, I'll include links for, for that. I'll, I'll check that out. Um, but uh, for you, what is the best place? Uh, YouTube, uh, Bandcamp, where should people check you out? Yeah, those two are okay. probably uh, the best places. YouTube channels where anything I do musically mm-hmm. um, that I want people to hear <laughs> will wind up there. <laughs> right, right, right. Awesome. Okay, so I'll, I'll include those links there. But uh, thank you so much, Mike. It was wonderful getting to talk to you. I, I had Thanks. a great time. Thank you. Thanks for having me. Yeah. I highly recommend checking out the uh, music videos for uh, Mike's stuff, um, like Leaving Forever and Perfect Alley Rare. Um, if you've ever wanted to see a shamisen in an 80s style music video, well, I don't know where else you could go to uh, get that. <laughs> But uh, I will be including the videos in the show notes, of course, as well. But you can also just find Mike Penny on YouTube. Just look it up. Very easy to find. If you have any questions or comments, send them over to mail at japanstationpodcast.com. Follow on Facebook and Twitter at Japan Kyoru's. Please don't forget to subscribe, rate, and review. That stuff helps the show out immensely. Uh, recommend it to a friend or family member. If they like Japan, then tell them, hey, check out Japan Station. Thank you so much to Mike Penny for providing the intro song this episode. And he's going to be providing the outro song too, because I'm going to take a clip from Perfect Alley Rare to close out the song. So thank you, Mike, for letting me use uh, clips of your songs. Um, They're awesome. Again, people, go check out his stuff. All right, that does it for uh, this episode. Don't forget to check out Ichimon Japan. The latest episode is about my experiences and a couple other people's experiences on the JET program. So uh, there's some good stuff. There's some bad stuff there. Um, There's a couple little funny stories there too. So uh, go check out the latest episode of Ichimon Japan, episode 47. Um, I'll be back on August 1st with a new episode. Uh, So make sure to subscribe so you don't miss out on that. 
Thank you so much for listening. And remember, go find your mini troponi. Video. That's it. Another hair. A perfect alligator. Words can't be used. Wait a minute, Bruce. Is this alligator news? It was, but that's okay. <laughs> you know?